All right, we're back. Got you on a tripod now. Make sure we're in the shot and the shot is good. Let's bend it down a little bit. Okay, so on the big bag, and this is the full size tech pack. I think they sell another one called the NTC or something. It's, it's, it's smaller, but in the first pocket, Got my impact driver and my blue point bit set. Very important for me to be able to have those in there like that because, oh, let's get you down a little more. Because this is uh, pretty much getting pulled out every time. So I got that blue point set with the long bits, everything from Phillips to Torx, even a flat and an extension. So that's that's very good to have that in there. Let's move you back some to increase the uh, the angle of the shot. And then I got my little uh, 12 volt DeWalt, the uh, DCF 801. So that's what I keep in the front pocket. And then in the little pocket above that, I just got a couple of bits. This will just be bit storage, but uh, a quick short Phillips and a quarter inch driver for my other blue point set so that I can use the sockets on here. So that's that. I'll probably, like I said, I'm going to end up with more bits in there. I'll be loading that out with more bits. So that's pretty good. Oh, also in that same compartment. I have my extra long DeWalt extension. So that's very important. So just by having all of this stuff right here together, it's making it a lot easier. I'm not having to run back and forth to the truck looking for stuff. I kind of got it organized. Everything has its place and it's always going to be there when I get done with it. It's easy for me to stick it right back where I got it from, which is making my life a lot easier. On the front, in this pocket, another really flat pocket, just business cards. So that's that's about all I could stick in there, but still important, you know, doing a service, got my general bag. It's, it's nice to be able to have a business cards, especially if I don't have any in my pocket. So, that's the very front around the side i got a snap on number two phillips because i grabbed that a lot and then i have a dewalt right angle attachment and as a matter of fact i need to uh pop this little bit out of here but i'll do it later from a slide i was working on didn't have very much room to get the retaining screw out of the uh, Swintec motor. Had a guy with a stuck out slide. He had to make it to New Jersey. He just wanted it in. He didn't want it to fix. He just wanted to get on his way. So I needed that. Like this guy right here for holding the tape measure. D-rings. I'm not really using a whole lot on the uh, sides of the bag. Um, this clips into here to lock it. You got to pull it down to open the back, and we'll get into that in a minute, but I already got it open. On the side right here, I got Teflon tape, electrical tape, using the strap for what it's intended for. Got my D-ring if I need to hang something else on it. I got my snap-on flashlight, inspection light. Works good, very bright. Then I have a coast light, which is a multi-featured light on the side. All right. So in the back, all right, if you drop this guy down, pull that open. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of got this loaded out not really using the pockets because the items that I have in here are kind of big. 
and then going from the back, I got a soft blow, uh, lightweight 20 ounce snap on hammer. You don't really need a hammer a lot when working on RVs. I keep heavier hammers in the truck, like brass hammers, if I'm doing brakes or something with drifts. But if you're grabbing a hammer a lot working on RVs, something's wrong. Every now and then you might need one and it's probably gonna be something non-marring and soft. Heavy duty pry bar. This is, uh, everybody makes these. Um, this brand is Sada indexing. They call these indexing pry bars, very useful. Um, this one came in a three pack with a set with three different sizes. I gave my dad the real big one because I didn't see myself needing that. I wanted the basically the ratchet size one. And then there was another one that was a little smaller, but this was the one that I kept. Um, I don't even know what happened to the other one, to be honest with you. But SATA is a TTI brand. Milwaukee is a TTI brand. And uh, they make these. They're like $140 on a snap-on truck for the snap-on version. They're all the same. They all rattle right here. It's, they're all the same. All right. I got my Kiwit multimeter. This is my touchscreen meter. Prefer using this one when working on generators because in the voltage setting, everything's on the screen and it shows, uh, it will show Hertz automatically along with the voltage. And I like that. Plus it has very convenient storage for the leads and it also does temperature. It's an automatic auto ranging meter. So once you put it on something, it figures out what it should be trying to read, whether it's resistance, voltage, continuity. It takes it a few seconds to figure it out, but it, it works pretty good. Then this is my main meter. This is my amp clamp meter made by Ideal. This one's called a tight sight. It has a display on the bottom and here. And if you think that's not a useful feature, you don't work in a lot of electrical boxes. When you're in uh, uh, electrical boxes and tight places and you could barely get the amp clamp around whatever you're trying to get at, you can't see the screen. So that is an extremely useful feature. I highly recommend these. Plus overall, Ideal makes very good products. It also has a no contact voltage detector built into it. Um, it's called the tight sight. It's a very good meter. I got mine kitted out with the alligator clips on it by default. And if I need something with uh, the probes, I just uh, go for the Kiwis. Stick that in there. I could probably get that in that pocket. All right. Got my blue point kit in here. The Phillip number two is stuck in that 90 degree. I'll take that out later and get it back in this kit. This is a super helpful kit. Totally recommend these. The Blue Point tools are not as expensive as the Snap-on branded ones. And they uh, and it, it's really good though. I'll stick that in there. I wish I could get that hammer to, to fit in there tight like that. I'll probably leave it right there because uh, that's a little better for me to have it right there out of the way in the clear pocket so you got a see-through pocket so I, I can see what's in there i got bits so i got a set of nut drivers very important these ones are magnetic they're just cheapy ones from harbor freight i mean like the first time you use them the magnets may or may not come out of them so you get what you pay for i'll probably end up buying a high quality set that won't do that or something at least with a warranty um, that if the magnets do come out, I can send them back. But the magnet is a very helpful feature when you're dealing with these type of fasteners. So, I mean, it, I like them. I'd rather have the ones with the magnets. Okay, so I got another uh, set of bits on the magnetic roll back there, but I can't get to it because of this bit set. It's so bulky that's in this pocket which are all my other bits. And we'll look at that in a second. I'll pull this one out. So I have a, a Milwaukee hex set bit set in here. It has all kind of, I have a lot of other bits in here as far as uh, torques, 
even little small Robeson number twos for my snap-on um, right angle quarter inch bit driver cordless 14.4 that uh, these uh, small bits make it to where it's very low profile and I can use power to get a lot of this stuff out. So that's why I have these little one inch and half inch bits for it works perfect for that. All right. Put that back in there. And I got a lot of extra room for uh, other bits if I need it. Okay. So this pocket is deep. It goes way down and it comes way up. And I keep this in there. And what it is, is just a DeWalt storage tray that has an assortment of different bits. So I have some more. Uh, so these are wing nut bits for tightening wing nuts. I have some higher quality USA made uh, nut drivers. The problem with these magnetic ones is eventually they get clogged up with middle shavings from uh, fasteners breaking off pieces of a uh, middle as you take them on and off and just they pick up everything so eventually they get clogged and it's very hard to get the stuff out that's the downfall so after they get like that of course the fastener doesn't seat as well and it becomes a problem um i don't know a way to get that out if somebody does know an easy way to get that out let me know but this is part of the reason why I buy the cheap ones, because I throw them away after they get like this. Now, these are made in the USA. Um, these come from Kimball. And, but, uh, yeah. Then I have different little, like, this goes on the end of a, uh, you put this thing on the end of a, a bit, and then it makes it magnetic. So when you have a fastener, let me grab one. So when you have a fastener, you can put that on there, slide up your tip. This one's made by Makita, and then it holds it on there so you don't lose it. That's very frustrating. This can save you a lot of time by having little devices like this. Now, in my industry, a lot of times, uh, see the magnet is really strong. That's a Makita one. Sometimes some of them don't fit on certain bits like these DeWalt bits. The Makita one is made for like a round shaft and it doesn't fit that good on these square DeWalt ones. DeWalt makes their own. I have one in a bit set somewhere that fits the square uh, DeWalt shanks. But this one's made for like these Makita, which uses a much smaller shank. But it does have ball detents in there that lets it hold on. So once you get it off, but it doesn't like that that square. It's hard to get that on that on that square. It works better on the the regular round shanks. All right, then a couple of drill bits, another technology for um, when you're dealing with non-ferrous materials, then the magnetic stuff is not gonna help you at all. So these are made by Vera, spelled with a W. And what these do is when you slide your, your bit in there, and let's pretend this is a non-ferrous stainless steel, basically, when you're dealing with stuff that you don't wanna rust, on a lot of campers, it's gonna be stainless steel. You put it in there like that and it's held. And there's enough room for this to slide back as you screw it in, it pushes this back and this opens up and the screw comes out. So that's how you deal with your non-ferrous materials without losing them. Very frustrating, takes a long time when you're trying to get into a cabinet or somewhere to get a screw back in probably dropped it on the way out and then when you finally get it to go back in it keeps falling off comes in two different sizes this was a two pack and uh that's what you got okay so for like the bigger bits and for the smaller bits 
All right. And then, yeah, just a bunch of bits. I keep a couple of, um, so like I was telling you about the one inch bit. So I got a bit ratchet. And I got those little tiny one inch bits and I need to do something really low profile. Here's one. You take one of those, you put it into here. And now when you got to get in a tight spot, you can use that guy. And then it, since it's a uh, roto head, you know, you get the benefit of having a roto head too. So I guess this is my first roto head ratchet actually. I thought it was, uh, I didn't have one and I bought that snap on uh, 3.8 driving a quarter body. But yeah, guys, these are just some of the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. The stuff that's in this bag, this is stuff that's getting used every single day. Working on the camper, you gotta have this stuff. All right, that the bat, zip it up. If you get one of these bags and you find that it's very hard for your zippers to zip up, you got too much stuff in it. You got it overloaded. You need to consider getting a second bag and uh, lighten your load up a little bit, but eventually this little cast piece on the zipper right here, that'll break. So uh, don't overload your bag. Going back to the front. Unzip, unzip, okay. See, it has a feature so that if I was in water, my bag's not, the top of my bag's not dipping in the water. So I have the strap right here. But since I'm not in water, I'll just go ahead and unstrap it. Okay. First thing that's popping out, I got my magnetic tray. Compact magnetic tray. Snap on. Turns into a... Uh, two cups it's called the mag dish super handy all right and uh, collapses back down more or less with a little persuasion it doesn't like to go back into shape very easily but it'll do it all right front pocket big wing nut bits a couple small um, step bits. I'll probably end up using that again for more bits. And that's probably where this uh, mag dish might end up going. But I just kind of leave it because this doesn't really get zipped up because of the strap that I use. So because of the strap that I normally keep like that, I kind of leave that pocket unzipped. Now, in this pocket right here, I got an assortment of stuff. It's see-through, which is nice. So I keep my most commonly used pick in here. I don't have a whole set of picks. I'm trying to keep the bag kind of lightweight. So I just try to put absolute necessities in here. Pocket pry bar, snap on. Um, let's see. Oh, it does have a part number right there. Some glue, super glue. Then just a adapter. Hex adapter with sleeve. Mind the wall. An extra knife, just in case I don't have my fast bat. A white paint marker for marking dark stuff telescoping inspection mirror when I can't see around the corners and stuff I'm trying to look at stuff and a micro USB charger because these are like getting phased out and it's hard to find them so I want to make sure I keep one in the bag if I gotta um, charge up my flashlight or something and then uh, let's see these little pieces of metal that they stick on the bag it's like a magnet so i guess if you're working with something like your bits and you can just kind of stick them there or whatever i i don't i don't know if i'll use that feature or not all right all 
I'll have to see what somebody else says as far as that feature goes. But they tried to make something, you know. All right. And the main part of the bag gonna be pliers and pry bars. So um, let's see about getting you up a little bit. Get the whole bag in the shot. Okay, so on the bottom, got magnetic pickup tool, telescoping for retrieving stuff. Couple of striking screwdrivers, Phillips and a flat east wing. A lot of times I gotta use these for pry bars. Nipex, automatic wire strippers. Nipex, locking pliers. These are very good locking pliers. Um, one of the main features besides, you know, the jaw closing really well and um, having a good grip because of that texture is the way they open when you get them real tight. Instead of having to press down with your thumb, which is normally hard, you just pull up and they open really easy. So like those. Then we have some hammerhead type quarters, spring-loaded wire strippers. And these are snap-ons and they're good for working inside electrical boxes. Behind that, we have snap-on uh, slip joint pliers. And these are the ones that also can do some of the spring clips, which you'll find on some of the water lines and stuff. Blue point. Cable cutters. Snap on PWZ zeros. The small, the smallest uh, of the pipe wrench, speed wrenches, which are uh, I use for hydraulic fittings on leveling jacks and whatnot. Behind these guys, I got a very thin 316th for like wall plates. I don't use this one as a pry bar, it's too small. It's for like wall plates and uh, very small flathead screws. I got the snap-on crimpers, cutters, for basically crimpers. So I have those. And I have these longer Irwin vice grip, double jointed needle nose. Right there. Phone's going into low power mode. So, all right. In front of the Irwins, I have a snap-on clone icon, little short needle nose <laughs> with the talon grip. Then I have a, uh, these have been, I got these from the auto parts store years ago. Very, very useful, you know, high leverage um, snips. And behind them, I have another pair of the icon snap-on clone dikes. So, Short pair of dikes, long pair of dikes. And beside that, I have Nipex. I like these better. See, see, that's a hallmark of a good pair of pliers. These Nipex, these are very good. I cut hard metal with them. These are awesome guys, and right out of the box, they're loose. So I might be re, I'll probably be taking these and putting them in the uh, electrical bag. Bam, done. Those are gone. I'm just gonna use the, the Nipex. And then I have a uh, pair of the Icon slip joint snap-on clones for the uh, regular slip joint pliers. Top tier.
I got my pry bars. This one's a JBL plastic pry bar, non marring for working with radio face plates and stuff like that. This one is made out of metal, so it can do a little more heavier duty. Extra flashlight, you can never, this is a Husky flashlight, you can never have enough flashlights. This is a uh, skin tool. It's just a, it's a pry bar, but it, it's good for sheet metal skins and stuff. But it's actually one of my favorite pry bars. The first one I bought was a Blue Point, And then I started buying the off name brand ones because they're all exactly the same. And it's Blue Point stuff a lot of time coming from Taiwan, China anyway. This is a glass tool, non marring pry bar, which I use for popping the windows open on Airstreams. They always get stuck in the summertime because the gasket gets very gooey. That rubber gasket material that they use in the Airstream gets hot, it sticks to the glass. You can't open the windows. And here, another pry bar. And finally, last but not least, we have a little short Phillips tip screwdriver made by Husky. So guys, that is the loadout. This is my everyday tools. And uh, this is the bag. Let's clip that back on there. And it has been working out great. I really enjoy using this and being able to have everything in its proper place and it goes back. I have people that work for me um, as I need them from time to time. Don't have any full-time employees yet, but on um, big jobs and for things that require more than one pe person, like working on awnings and stuff, I have guys that will work for me and they don't always put the stuff back. <laughs> and when it's just all going in the truck, it ends up all over the truck. Now I can send the guy and I can say, hey, get the big veto or grab the small veto. And once I get my bag, I know everything's in it. I don't have to worry about, you know, sending them back for something else. So that's what we got today, guys. RV Tech Pro out.